Oh, oh good fighter, double header. Now, how come there aren't other people fishing? I know. Oh, <laughs> yeah, double header. Don't like you realize how much fun these fish are? They've probably never seen three guys happier to get a white sucker, <laughs> right? That's right. Let's go fishing. People, when you're in the mood, let's go fishing. Well, it's just me and you. Head on down to the fishing hole. Grab your hat, get your pole. Let's go fishing. When you're in the mood. Canadian Sport Fishing is brought to you by Rapala. Premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. Sale, the outdoors superstore. Fisher Girl, catch the passion. You know, we've got a beautiful mid-spring day. It's nearing the end of April, and we're on uh, one of the Great Lake tributaries, and I'm with my good friends, Jason and Tyler Howick, and we're doing something a little bit different. We're actually fishing for suckers. To me, it's almost a lost art because most people fish for the glamorous game fish like steelhead and trout in the tributaries and resident trout in the summer for smallmouth and so on. But for some reason, the lowly sucker has kind of been left out of the picture. And they're great, to me, they're great game fish. And you can get some pretty big ones. Now, gentlemen, you've been fishing here quite a bit, right? Yes, yeah. quite and often. The fishing the has been month. this good. That was my first cast. My, my worm was in the water for maybe three minutes and we've got the first sucker on. It's been they that good. Them. Yep, they bite a lot. So this These is plentiful. amazing. Pools are just loaded with fish. Good. If you can, actually, I'm glad I brought that along. We can extend the handle, but if you want to go down there, Looks we'll like scoop this guy. Now you think this is a short head? Short head red horse, yeah. Okay, we're gonna explain this to the viewers. Now you've caught some pretty big red horses here, but they weren't this species, right? No, river red horse, I believe okay. they're called. See Jason can... caught one that was over t just over 10 pounds. Wow. Yeah, that was a real monster. I'm but gonna... a really good fight on light tackle. You oh. know, look how, I think they're very beautiful fish. They so remind I, me yeah. of some of the barbels that you see in some of these European match fishing competitions. They look very similar because their mouth is a little bit on the bottom, just like this guy. Now, what are some of the features that distinguish this sucker from some of the other species? Now, this one is called a short head red horse. Is These that because are, it's, you got see, a it's got a short head? Yeah. yeah, compared yeah. to a white sucker, it's got a very small mouth, too, compared to the other species of suckers. Yeah, I can see that. And yeah. the easiest way is this beautiful bright color on their tail. Yeah, bright that's red. amazing. Okay, I'm going to give you the honors of putting him back in the water. Thank All you, sir. Right. He nice should be nice and lively because that water's cold. It sure is. Yeah. yeah, is it ever. It's a long, actually, that's a smelt net. But um, I thought I'd bring it because it's handy for it's using the mesh to actually hold on to the fish. There. And there he goes. Good. Nice release. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, baits and rigging. Basically for suckers, there's no need to get complicated. We just run a simple split shot line, a couple heavy shot to keep you anchored on bottom. I like to use a nice little, uh, I think that's a size 8 hook. I find that's about good for the suckers. Uh, you can go a little smaller, but definitely found that bumping up the hook size helps on the hooking percentage, especially on bigger fish. Now, uh, the best bait to use for suckers has got to be a big fat live crawler. A few uh, hooking tips. Uh, we like to thread the crawler multiple times onto the hook. Just like so, just kind of thread it once, push it up, thread it again, push it up. Just find this uh, makes it more difficult for a sucker to clean you, to rob you of your worm. And I like to just leave a little bit dangling there so that when it's laying on bottom, you get a little bit of action. Whereas if you're only to hook the, the worm once, uh, you have a much less chance of getting a hookup. Whereas, you know, if a sucker comes up to a balled up worm, he's got to pick at it. You have multiple opportunities and you can see the hits a lot better. And uh, the main thing is just to keep it simple. There's no reason to get complicated for suckers. Just a couple shot, hook and a worm, and you're set to go. Catch some fish.
You know, if you love to fish, especially in this in-between time, like right now, the trout season, the regular trout season isn't open yet. Um, you can still fish at the mouths of the river, but all of the trout have gone up. And it's kind of an in-between time. So a lot of people aren't catching panfish. The channel catfish fishing and bullhead is on and off, but the suckers are in. They're a great fish that you can enjoy for probably a month and a half when they start coming into the rivers. Not only are they fun to catch, they're very plentiful and they also taste great. Think he's ready? Yeah, lots of energy, eh? Oh yeah. Lots of spunk. Beautiful. Another That's nice fish. A little bit bigger, eh? Yeah, he's chunky. You're getting good practice with the net, but you guys had fish on too. <laughs> you were kind of quiet. Yeah, but I had one on, he got off on. in the boulders there. Yeah, this guy's thicker. I don't know if it could be a female full of eggs or, or what. Very healthy fish. Be. You can see it's very lightly hooked with that hook just in the mouth. Isn't that gorgeous? That fish is probably, I'm guessing, about two pounds. And it's a really good fighting fish on light line. And I am using a nine foot steelhead rod, just a light action one. Just a gorgeous fish. Okay, we're gonna get him back. Okay, get him back in the water. That's a nice deep bag. See if I can get him to flip out and maybe just stay there for a bit. You know, we could use the basket net live release, but this nice deep net is perfect. That guy, look at, he's right down in the rocks. And there he goes back out, very camouflage. X Mark, you find fish, catch of the day. Hi Harley, it's Tony Brecknock calling. So I'm looking at uh, this cute young guy with a four pound small mouth that you uploaded to our You Find Fish Catch of the Day. And I need to know all about your catch. Okay, so uh, this was one of my first outings with my son Reese. Um, he's seven years old. This is both of our first year fishing together seriously at all. And uh, we're out in one of our favorite spots out in Lake St. Clair. And this is one of the first bass. He's pulled up completely on his own right from setting the hook to reeling him in the boat. and. Uh, uh, we netted her up, he took it off, and we took the picture, and then uh, he put him back in the water, and off he went. It was a good experience and a good day. You know, the nice thing about stream fishing, whether you're trout fishing or even sucker fishing like we are today, you don't need a lot of terminal tackle. Look at my little tackle for the day. I've got a little assortment of split shot here, one egg sinker that got in there by mistake, but really it's split shot. And then on the other side, it almost looks like a cigarette pack, but that's my hooks. So you can see this is kind of handy. There's about four different styles of hooks, and I'm just going to talk about them for a sec. I've done really well using these gamugatsus, and these particular hooks are called split shot or drop shot hooks. And you can see that they're very light wire and they have a bend, but they're almost like a wide gap. So some of the best hooks to use when you're stream fishing, whether you're trout fishing or sucker fishing, one is the split shot or drop shot hook. The other one is the bait holder. They call them bait holders because if you really look closely on the back of the shaft, there's two little barbs. And when you're using a worm, it actually helps to hold the worm or the spawn sack on the hook. So these are size number 10. Then these are the snelled gamugatsus, okay? So again, they tell you the test, it's a six pound test, size eight hook, and you can see that they're the spade ends, there's no eye, that's why they come already snelled on a monofilament leader. And then the last ones are the ones that most people use for steelheading. They're the octopus in the number 10 size. So if I spread these out, kind of like playing cards, these are probably the best hooks to use if you're fishing for suckers, or any other stream fish, even if you want to play with some chub or you want to do some steelhead fishing or trout fishing. You know, this is kind of extreme sucker fishing. Is I, it ever? I know you guys fish, you, you emailed me saying, you know, the weather's not supposed to be the nicest. Do you want to still go out? What was my answer? The fish Let's are biting. Do Let's it. go. We can do it. We can do yeah. it. Suckers can do are it. always biting yeah, yeah. somewhere. We just dress properly. Yeah. That oh, is a nice a, size. Oh, that's good. Look at nice. Wow. Gorgeous. Look, Look at him dogging. He's head shaking down there. I'm glad I brought this uh, long handled net. Look at that. What nice a that gorgeous job. specimen. Wow. That's is that a, one of the biggest ones yeah, you caught? Yeah, that's upper size for a one of the head. bigger ones. That's a beautiful for sure. fish. Big female. Beautiful fish. He fought great. Or she oh, fought yeah? great, I should yep. say. Man, she's going to be hard to hold. Look at this. I can barely get my hand around it. Nice work, Jay. Wow. Beautiful. Look at that. I can barely get my hands around it. <laughs> she is wow. I'm getting so excited because <laughs> well, I, I have a respect for all fish. 
And totally. I think suckers are great. I just wish more people fished for them. Yeah, they've you know? really got a bad rap, a bad reputation. Yeah, not a mark on it. No, no I just think very gorgeous clean fish. fish. They're, they're, you know, they're a great option. Now, I think you're going to need pliers because this guy ate it. Okay. I don't see the hook. He doesn't have any teeth, thank goodness. No. <laughs> but it, what, a, what a nice size fish. If he's hooked too deep, we might have to have it for shore lunch because we're going to do a couple of fish up and show viewers how you deal with the little That'd Y bones great. that they have. Yeah, I enjoy trying eating. that. You know, they're also, the, the suckers are important because they tell you that a fishery is really healthy. You know, where you see sucker populations decline, it means that there's a problem with the environment. There oh, are really? so many in here. Yeah. They come up here by the hundreds. Oh, there you go. Maybe it'll be fine for release. Perfect. Yeah. Good. Nice. Got the hook up. Yep. Well done. Good job. Let me get the line all off there. here. Good. Good. There. The oh, good. You okay to yep. get the hook in you? Nope, I'm good. I'm going to put him back in that nice hoop and in the water. All right. What a gorgeous fish. He's nice and lively. He's just into that deep part of the mesh. Look at this. What a go Oh, oh he's lively. he made a turn. Come on. Out of there. Out of there. <laughs> he's trying to there hide on you. Perfect. Fisher girl! Catch a passion! So I find that worms are one of the best baits to use while fishing, and I find when I'm fishing for bigger fish, like bass, pike, or trout, I like to use the entire worm. So I'm going to take this dew worm right here, mm -hmm. and I'm going to go about a third of the way down to where his collar is. And I'm going to take my hook, and I'm going to put it in just before the collar, and I'm not going to put a lot of the worm on, and I'm going to hook him just like that. Nikki, you did that perfectly. Look at most of that worm is hanging, and you can see how he's starting to wiggle even in our hand. Now, the only thing when there's a long worm hanging like that, when you go to cast, you have to cast gently. Because exactly. sometimes half the worm can tear off yep. if you cast too rough. The other thing to remember, too, is that small panfish will nibble, but a large predator fish, when he sees a whole worm like that, will come up to it, especially if it's wiggling, and inhale the whole thing. Closed captioning is brought to you by Naden Boats, Canada's finest aluminum boats. Over the last two decades, I've really come to appreciate using a good landing net to land my fish. A landing net where you're not spending a lot of time taking the hooks out of the fish and the net, and also you can get the fish back in the water for practicing live release. So what I'm holding up here are two sides of hoop nets that are special nets. They're called live release basket nets. So you can see here that literally the bottom part of the net, the deep part is gone, and they've actually sewed it so that it has a flat section on the bottom. Now the only thing with the live release nets is that it's very important important you use the right size for the size of fish you're catching. So this particular hoop size in that is ideal for let's say trout under 10 pounds and even pike under 5 or 6 pounds. But if you're planning on catching larger fish, it's very important to have a larger hoop, not just to get the fish in, but once the fish is laying down, let's say you get a 36 to 40 inch pike, very important that the hoop is big enough because remember, you don't have that deep net, so it has to be able to lay in it. The nice thing about these nets is that the mesh is plastic coated. You can see here because the light's reflecting off it, it's shiny. It's not heavy though, like the old rubber nets. So even if you're using a lure with three trebles, the treble hooks can go in the actual gaps of the net, but they won't catch the material. Well, we've moved a little bit upstream. This is a really nice holding pool, and you can see it's slower water. It's really what I think of when I think of sucker fishing. The other pool was more of a trout pool. Guys, the fish are getting smaller, but that's okay. <laughs> Good net, Going backwards here. Squid. That okay, monster's we'll in here somewhere. In here. There we go. You know, you hear stories, especially young kids, and I'm going back a few years ago, when they chase suckers in the streams, you know, and use hockey sticks and grab them with their hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't hear stories like that anymore, and it's probably because the sucker numbers are down in a lot of places. Let me see if I can get this guy out. This guy's a little bit smaller, but he's still very, very pretty. Look at Bright colors. Look at how yeah, orange his fins are. Mm. Just beautiful sheen. Very healthy looking fish. You know, when I'm looking at him, and they do have a much smaller mouth, even than the white sucker. Here, we're going to put him back in the net, and sure. you can slide him back in the water. Even though my line's cut on there, we're going to get okay. it out. Yeah, it's a little guy. I want him to keep spawning. And he's, he doesn't know he's free yet. No, he Freedom! There, there he goes. goes. Perfect.
If you're a conservation-minded fisherman, you should be aware that if you like to catch and release fish and use bait, there are certain hooks that work better than others to make sure that the fish aren't hooked deep. What I'm holding up here is called a circle hook. And you can see it's called a circle hook because the bend comes around almost in a full circle. So the gap is quite narrow between the tip of the hook and the actual shaft, as opposed to being out here open. Now the reason these work so well is once you have bait on it and a fish grabs this hook, we're gonna pretend this is the fish's mouth. If he swallows the hook, because the point is pointing in and the gap is so small, the hook actually pulls out. And when it comes to the corner on each side of the mouth, it catches the side. So the most important thing about using a circle hook is that when a fish does take the bait and you let it take it, you don't set the hook hard. You just put even and firm pressure on your line because you want to pull that circle hook out to the edge of the mouth where it's going to grab on the sides. You know, you gotta love the scenery here. There's so many tributaries that go into the Great Lakes no matter where you live, and the sucker runs are everywhere. They're on the American side, the Canadian side, even as far north as like Thunder Bay, you know, they're, they're everywhere. So they're a fish that's very comfortable in cold water. And the neat thing is that for most of the time, they're in very deep water and feeding on the bottom, like in the Great Lakes. So you don't really see them. Later on in the summer, it's an exception if you get a sucker fishing some of the tributaries. You'll see some of the juveniles, in the tributaries. You're right. Yeah, but it's really the spring, right? When it's, you take it you can take advantage of yeah, them. Yeah, oh coming definitely. In. Heavy runs. Okay. Come on in. Nice, nice one. Nice. Fish. Maybe this will be another one for the fryer. Yeah, he's good size. Just Perfect nice eater. size. So pretty. Come on. I think they're great fun. Beautiful. You know, you could be using a float. To me, this reminds me so much of steelhead fishing. Yeah. I hear a lot pretty of guys fish. catch them on floats while they're steelhead fishing. Oh, yeah, fishing. yeah, yeah, by accident. Hey buddy says he gets a lot on yarn flies. Yeah, yeah. Well, anything, right? Because they eat insects and vertebrates and everything else. Yeah. Okay, I'll get that hook out. We have to take our time because of the light line. Yeah. We don't like to re-rig, but it is easy to re-rig. Yeah, good size fish. And if you can hold them up sideways so they can get a good look at it. Very, very pretty. Without them flying out of your hands yeah. onto the clay. Here, I'll hold the net underneath okay. so in case. Pretty. Flops out there. Yeah, yeah. pretty. Look at that. Gorgeous, chunky. Yeah, very nice colors. Very slick fish. You know, that's a perfect eating size sucker. Not too big, so we're gonna keep that one to do our fish fry later on. So here's about a two to three pound sucker. And what I'm going to do is the first thing I'm going to do is take the scales off because I want the skin to stay on there and I'll tell you why in a little bit. So I'm just using my fillet knife, very important to have a sharp fillet knife, and I'm going to go against the scales. So you can see that they scale quite easy. You have to be careful that you don't have the knife pointed too much into the fish because then you start lacerating it. So I've taken the scales off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the fillet. I'm going to go just behind the head and go along the back. So this is just like you'd fillet any kind of fish. I've rinsed off the fillet and you can see how nice and white and firm the sucker meat is. But if I run my little finger right along the edge here, much like a northern pike, they have a set of Y bones. But in the case of the suckers, they have two sets. So here's what you have to do. You put your fillet knife in and you do this about a quarter inch apart. So if you just watch what I do here, I'm just going down enough to go to the skin and I'm actually cutting through those hair thick Y bones. So when we cook this fillet at 350 degrees, which is the right temperature to fry fish at, those bones are gonna crystallize. What I've done is cleaned all the fish and I've made those serrations about a quarter inch apart, just like you can see there, but I've also cut the chunks into bite-sized morsels. So you see the skin is there, it's keeping the meat together, and then you can see that we've got these little wings. So all I'm doing is dropping these in my coating and uh, stirring them around in there, making sure that the coating is going in between all those serrations that I've made. Okay, we've got the oil nice and hot. We're just gonna put our fish pieces in. By the way, I prefer to either use a canola or a corn oil. I find that it works really well to do my fish. If you cook any meat, not just fish, and your oil is not hot, especially if you do it in the frying pan, you know, over your stove, 
what's going to happen is it's going to cook, but it's going to absorb a lot of the oil, and that's not really healthy. So you want them to turn a nice goldy brown color, and we're going to let it cook for probably about 10 or 12 minutes. So this is freshly caught sucker. Look at how beautiful those fish pieces are. There's nothing like fresh sucker meat. And you can see the way they've been serrated about actually a quarter inches pretty close. Perfectly cut. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all those little bones, the Y bones, hair thick, have crystallized. So here, you take a piece, you grab sir, it, nice. help yourself. Thank you, sir. Now, honestly, tell me what you think. Hello, okay. yeah. Mmm. Yeah, nice. That's delicious. That is very good. You the man. That's the All biggest one right. so far. Oh, okay. a different we're getting species the net. to boot. We're getting the net. Three men on this fish. Oh, oh, that's, that's a okay. big white sucker. Beautiful. That's big. It's giant. Yeah, I'd love to Which show the viewers the here? difference. Well, I just got to connect ever. this thing. Take man, your time. That's probably one Hold of the bigger on ones I've ever caught. Don't lose it. I've almost got the little thing through. Look what he did to your worm too. He blasted it way to, right up there by your split. Yeah, he did too. Now that's top end size for a white sucker. Good size fish. Nice white sucker. Come on in. That's got to be one of your biggest white suckers. It might be my new personal best. So I've got a tape truth. measure in my tackle. We can check it out. Good. Yeah, that's that a would heavy be great. duty fish. Good He's fish. got a lot of weight to him. Yep. Just see if I can go like this here. Do the proper grip and grin. Yeah. We're going to be filleting this wow. fish, but isn't that? Look at this Ooh, for a white sucker. Nice. Now, can you tell the difference compared to the other golden ones that we were getting? The red horse. Look at it. Has a very white belly, gray sides. To me, it's much wider in the back. Look how wide that back is. But look at the difference in the mouth. See how that mouth extends down? So it's more of like a carpish mouth, big head. Yeah. I think they're a beautiful fish. So oh, I mean, I've caught so many of these fishing for walleye, you know, other species of fish, deep water, shallow water. I've even caught them ice fishing. Can you believe really? that? Yeah, white Whoa. suckers. I've actually gotten into schools where I've taken home like 10, 15 to eat. Really? Not this big though. We're talking like half the size. That's definitely that is a gorgeous top end fish. size for a white sure. sucker. Wow. Nice one. Canadian Sport Fishing is brought to you by Suffix, the world's most hardcore fishing line. Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. Sail, the outdoors superstore. Fisher Girl, catch the passion. My main rod that I've been using today for sucker fishing is actually a nine foot light action steelhead rod. And if you look at the specs, it's rated for four to 10 pound test. And what I have it loaded with is this suffix. It's the fluorocarbon line. Just gotta get some of the mud off my spool here. This is it here. Now, a lot of people use fluorocarbon as a leader material, but this particular fluorocarbon from suffix is called the 100% castable fluorocarbon. You can use this for your main line. It won't be too stiff so that it has memory and flies off your spool. So that's what I have for the main line here. 